YouTube, Christian Pepper Gal here. And today I'm going to be making hamburger goulash meal in a bag. So why don't you come along and join me. First of all, we're going to be putting the meal into a Mylar bag. And this one has a Ziploc up at the top. And then also um, expands so you can stand it up once you have your meal and your water in it. Anyway, the first thing I'll do is go ahead and mark this because it's something I usually forget to do with the contents and today's date. So I'm just going to put goulash. Today's date, May 14th, 2019. I'm also going to put in here that we'll need one and a half cups water. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I almost put the bag away and it's I'm going to be needing it. <laughs> uh, it's one of those days. We all have them. Okay, the great thing about this meal is it's a recipe that I've taken that my mom has handed down to me and I just converted it over to using dehydrated and freeze-dried food products. All it takes, once you've got all the ingredients in the bag, to cook it, per se, is one and a half cups of boiling water. Then um, you're good to go. It's great for your bug out bags. It's also good for camping, hiking, trail through, or through trail, whichever it is. Um, just even to have in your pantry at home. I use these meals in my microwave actually. Um, it's much healthier than buying the microwave meals and it's also much healthier than buying the pre-packaged um, trail meals or emergency food uh, meals that you can get in the stores and online. So, I actually have an article about that that I just wrote yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and kind of mention that now. <laughs> but it's the difference between um, of buying your food pre-prepared and making it on your own, your emergency foods for emergency food storage or for your backpack for whatever purpose. Um, the difference in the nutritional value and the serving sizes and even the taste. I'll leave a link to that article down below so you can check it out. Okay, let's get started on this hamburger goulash. The first thing we're going to need is freeze-dried hamburger. At least I'm using freeze-dried. Some people will dehydrate their own, but I've never, I, I, I've done it but I never really felt safe about using it um, for the long term. So I started buying it and it's really not that expensive when you think about it and how much you use of it for each individual meal. Now this is one quarter cup. I'm just gonna dump it in the bag. Put it back together. This, by the way, is Mountain House um, freeze-dried hamburger meat and I just took it out of the big can that it comes in and put it into individual canning jars so that it will keep its shelf life. The next thing we're going to use is macaroni. Now this is macaroni that I have cooked and then dehydrated and the reason for cooking it first is because it um, when you go to rehydrate rehydrate it. <laughs> it is quicker to do that than it is to cook it over the campfire or the camp stove. Um, and not only that, but if you cook it, if you put it in the bag uncooked, it'll last forever as well. However, then when you get to um, cooking it, you'll need to prepare it 
per the package directions, which means boil it in the water, rinse and drain, and then you can put it in your food. This way, it's already in the food, and all you have to do is add the boiling water to it, and it'll cook right up. So this we're going to use one half cup of dehydrated macaroni. And just put it right in the bag. The next thing is corn. And I'm using, again, corn that I dehydrated myself. You can buy freeze-dried corn and use it um, in the same amount and it'll work just the same. I'm going to put in one quarter cup of the corn. Oh, it smells so good. I love opening up the corn. Put it right in the bag. It smells just like corn on the cob. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is put in some tomato powder. I wish I had some like uh, dehydrated tomatoes that I could put in their hole because I love the whole tomatoes in my goulash. But since I don't, this is going to work just fine. They'll give it the taste, it just won't have the same texture. And this is powdered tomato that I got from Augustine Farms that I ordered through Amazon. And I really, really love it. Okay, we're going to use three tablespoons of the tomato powder. Those are the main ingredients. Now on to the spices. The first thing I'm going to add is dehydrated onions. Yeah, this doesn't look like dehydrated onions, but it is. <laughs> because I used just this container to store dehydrated onions in. If you can see in there. I'll show you. We're, not, we're going to use one teaspoon of the dehydrated onions. And as I said, I just put it in this container for storage. This is the one that I use like almost daily. Then we're going to put in one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. And one fourth teaspoon of Italian seasoning and I went ahead and put some in this con this little measuring cup so it would be easier to measure it out than trying to pour in that amount from this shaker container because it's kind of like just like these for the salt and pepper that I have you have to twist the cap so I'm going to put a little bit of pepper in here I can get it going. And then I'm going to add a little salt. Just a dash of each is all you need. You don't want to get too much salt in there. And that's it. That's it for the ingredients. So, see there you have it. All the ingredients inside. The bag will stand when we pour the water in to reconstitute it and cook it up. I don't know if you can see in there. I'm going to try.
try to let you see. That's the ingredients. And this will make approximately two cups of, of to make one serving. So I'm going to go ahead and put together a few more of these bags because these are for my uh, long-term food storage and bug out bags. And then I'll be back and we'll seal the bags up. So I'll be back in a flash. And I am back. Funny thing happened. Twice. Twice I filmed this segment and it didn't record. Probably because I need to learn how to use <laughs> the record on my new cell phone. Yes, I use my cell phone for these videos and I got a new one just last week. So bear with me. I'm just going to take you through the steps and show you what I did because I've already sealed up all of the bags all of the bags that I prepared. So the first thing we do when we're ready to seal is we get our straightening iron ready, get it nice and hot, and this is a straightening iron that's used for hair. This one is used only for sealing mylar bags. So with having said that, We've got our straight iron ready. Then the first thing we do before actually sealing the bag up is we take an oxygen absorber. And I keep these in a jar so that the air um, doesn't affect them to make them airtight. We take the oxygen absorber, place it inside the bag, and then... We close the Ziploc on the bag, get it nice and closed properly. But before we close it all the way, we stop it about here, leave about a quarter of the way open, and press out all the air, the excess air that's in the bag. Once that's done, then go ahead and close it the rest of the way. Then we take our straight iron and we hold it on the edge of the bag being careful not to go down too far to where the zipper portion is because um, that will cause it not to work properly. We hold it there and hold it and hold it and hold it. Then we flip it over and hold it on the other side. And you want to press down just a little bit on it so that you're making sure that you're getting a good seal and it's going through both layers of the mylar bag. And then just go along and keep pressing the iron on it to make sure you've gotten everything. Then you're done and you have your mylar bag sealed. And that's all there is to it. So thank you for watching and in the next couple of days or so I will have a video of um, cooking the meal in the bag and then tasting it and letting you see just exactly what it looks like once the meal is prepared. So until next time, happy prepping and God bless.